What is up, ladies and gentlemen? How are you guys doing this afternoon? Welcome to another exciting episode, the last episode, actually, of Cinetober Season 6. It's glad to know that I have actually had a season where nothing is trying to kill me. <laughs> I must be really in a safe place. Note to self, always do Cinetober at my sister's house. Oh crap, what have I just done? I should probably edit, edit, edit that out later. Don't worry, that won't be in the video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my review of one of my new favorite horror movies, The Original Pet Cemetery from 1989. Uh, now, whenever it came to me actually watching this movie, I had seen videos about it, I've seen people talk about the movie, and I just never got around to watching it, and then the remake was coming out. So I was like, alright, I'm going to do it. I'm going to watch the original, I'm going to see what all the fuss is about. And I freaking fell in love with this movie when I saw it. This movie is a masterpiece. It is a really good movie. This movie captures things from how to deal with grief in the wrong way to how to be able to deal with something that we're going to have to face one day. Death. <coughs> Epic sneeze. And the fact of the matter is, what's so creepy about this story in general is this is all based on a what-if scenario. The fact of the matter is that this story is what if Stephen King's kid actually did get hit by a car. That's what this whole thing is. Stephen King's kid almost did actually get hit by a car. And he actually wrote this story, but he almost didn't publish it because of how scared it, how much it scared him. The fact that he almost lost his kid in a scenario like this. But you know what? He finally published it. And we have honestly probably maybe Stephen King's, I don't know if this is like his most personal story or what. But I want to say this actually might be the only book that he's ever written, or like in his early career, where he wasn't on a buttload of drugs or drinking half the time. Of course, so I don't know. If my kid, when if I ever have a kid, almost got hit by a car, I might turn to drinking too. Actually, no, I would never do that. But, ladies and gentlemen, this movie, this is basically kind of like grief and how to deal with it in the wrong way on a silver platter. That's what this movie is. This movie has so much tension. This movie has so good storytelling, chemistry, from the family members to the neighbor to the pet cemetery itself. This movie does a magnificent job of introducing these uh, th these characters to us who are dealing with things in their own way, from Lewis, who is dealing with the fact that now he's getting to have time with his family that he didn't get when he was a doctor back when, where they were where they used to live, to him actually having to, you know, talk to his daughter about death who she has like this massive breakdown when they get introduced to the pet cemetery. You know, like he has to explain to her, you know, one day we are going to die. And like, you know, we get that epic dialogue from the daughter, like where she's like, God can't have my cat. Church is my cat. Let God have his own if he wants, but he cannot take my cat. That delivery was so good. The actors in this movie do such a good job of portraying this story and these characters from, Rachel, who has a fear of death, wants nothing to do with death, and when she actually goes to the pet cemetery with Judd and all of them at the beginning of the story, you can see how all of this bothers her. You can physically see on her face, and just like in her emotions, and just how she just how she walks and how she acts, she is terrified of death because of how she honestly blames herself for her sister Rachel or her sister Zelda's death. And the fact of the matter is, in this movie, she blames herself. <sighs> Whereas in the remake, her sister's death actually was her fault. Of course, I think we could also contemplate that, that up to laziness. But Dunlight's all the way over there. And all I have to do is just put it in there and press a button. But, it, but she can't walk. But then there's so many stairs. Dunwitter, you're getting used today. Ra the portrayal of Rachel in this movie is done really well, and I really, I, I applaud all the actors in this movie, from the guy who plays Lewis to the woman who plays Rachel, to the kids, especially Gage. Oh my gosh, that kid! He's played in a lot of a lot of things. He was really popular around in the nineteen eighties, like late eight, 1980s to like nineteen nineties, from playing in actually this movie and Wes Craven's New Nightmare, which, as far as I know, I think that's the only horror movie he's been in. You can put in the comments below and tell me what else he's been in. But I'm just going to go ahead and get my grade. I love this movie. This movie gets an A. I love the original Pet Cemetery. 
from them delivering the backstories to us giving us a history of the pet cemetery and kind of even making the pet cemetery kind of feel like a character in itself they this movie actually does a whole lot better job of talking about the rituals that in the remake it tried to show the rituals but the difference is the rituals go nowhere in the ritual the rituals don't really go nowhere in either story but the fact of the matter is at least in this they talk about the rituals and what kind of happens like you know like whenever kids whenever pet sim whenever a pet dies all the kids get together and bring their pets it's gone into more detail than the remake did the remake made it like this whole big thing nothing happened it, it somewhat happens in this movie but also at the same time not really okay so you know, we you know we we get the story of them moving to this house. There's a pet cemetery. They do a an even better job of basically you know like, kind of like how the pet cemetery itself has like this kind of scent, this sweet smell that really attracts you to the cemetery. And I even like how they did the ghost of Victor Pascal as well better than I did uh, in the remake actually. And the fact of the matter is, the difference between the remake and in this, Lewis actually visits the pet cemetery. In the beginning of the movie, whereas in the remake, he did not go to the pet cemetery. He was told about it because Ellie found it. And in this, they all go to the pet cemetery. Judd actually says, yeah, everything you, everything back there is all yours. I will take you all on a trip one day, and I will show you all that you own and stuff like that. And then, like, when it comes to burying the cat, Judd takes him up to the pet cemetery, and then he's like, actually, uh, we, we, we got to do this right. I'm going to take you somewhere else. And, you know, like, he keeps saying, we're almost there, we're almost there. And, like, when they finally get to the Indian burial ground, the place where the dead walk, like, the tone is completely changed. It goes from, like, this kind of little creepy but innocent thing that kids did for their pets to something completely else entirely. And I know I just butchered grammar there. I'm hoping that there's no serious English teachers watching this. But the fact of the matter is they really sell on how important this burial ground is and the pet cemetery itself and when they make the mistakes in bringing back the people that should have just stayed dead you feel the grief and you feel that something is really wrong and this movie even does a better job of well actually because i think it was actually trying to connect other stephen king movies because ellie maybe has the shining ability and she like you know telling her mom i feel i had a dream that dad's going to do something really really bad and you just all the actors do a magnificent job in this movie i cannot say that enough the acting is just phenomenal and with you know eventually at the end lewis is like i know what i did wrong he gets so desperate he's lost literally everything he held dear actually except his daughter he had his daughter but he lost his baby boy and when you see him actually like it you it honestly seems like he's going to get his son and then he trips and he falls and then all of a sudden you get that shot of Lewis screaming in agony and in pain of losing his son and you see those pictures I'm like oh my gosh I'm never going to be able to watch that scene and not feel disturbed you feel the you feel everything when that happens you feel every single decision that Lewis makes and you understand why he's doing it and then he's so desperate at the end. He's like, I know what I did wrong. I just waited too long. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, no. It's not going to do anything better. No. And then how the movie ends. I love this movie. Guys, go watch the original Pet Cemetery. Far better than the remake could ever be. <laughs> Sometimes remakes aren't always better. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed Cinetober. I made it. I made it. I freaking made it. I made it. I made it. No one's gonna kill me. No one's gonna kill me. <laughs> oh, I got that door locked. Wait. I'm gonna go check that. Guys, hope you have enjoyed Cinetober. I'm gonna be coming back with some more videos if I make it after tonight. <laughs> Fingers crossed.